the Lord, the Lord walked with the children of Israel in the desert. And when the cloud of the Lord's glory came down, He led them through the desert. Done? Yeah. Until they entered the promised land. Amen. Yeah. And so in the process of going through the wilderness, He took Moses to heaven and showed him the pattern of heavenly things. No, no. He took him to heaven and he showed him heaven. Is in itself explanatory that he took him to heaven and showed him heaven. Amen. So he gave him a tour of heaven and showed him everything. Amen. And then when he came back down, he said, I want you to do here on earth exactly what I showed you up there on the mountain. So the Lord caused Moses to, to construct the tent. I think you should close this for, this, for, the, for, the, for the sake of the recording. Thank you. So, so he, he, he said, do exactly as you saw on the mountain. And Moses did exactly as he saw on the mountain. Amen. All the articles of worship. Everything. And he even told him there was a certain man who was going to give the skills needed to design uh, certain things. The garment and all these things. So, now, the church, which was erected in the New Testament, with so much power. The Holy Spirit tabernacled. Amen? Came over them. He filled them. And many people got saved. <clears throat> and then the church began a mighty walk through history from that time forth. Amen? Until today. Now, if you have been an ardent student of uh, uh, church history, you will find that somewhere the church began to lose strength. Amen? The church began to lose strength. To the point where she lost sight of a heavenly destination. Roman Catholicism here, politics infiltrating here, until she became so consumed with human theology, human philosophy, psychology, and these things began to destroy the message. So she was no longer focused on the glorious throne, on the glorious cross, on the old ragged cross. Now she was just here, horizontally focused. Amen? Mm -hmm. Then the Reformation took place. Have you heard of such a thing? Reformation? Reformation. Mm. But you have heard someone called Martin Luther. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Have you heard of someone else called uh, John Calvin? Okay. So, <laughs> so, so these men, many, many men. So, the Lord used them to do a mighty reformation in the church to take her out of Roman Catholicism because Catholicism in session is not Christianity. We don't, you know, the church does not pray to Mary. Amen. Okay. Even two days ago, I was looking. On, you, on, on, on Twitter, I saw <coughs> this uh, uh, Catholic page. There's a prayer written, and then at the end it says, Mary, please pray for us, or something like that. Mary, Queen of Heaven. Uh, so all this idolatry there. You say, surely, surely, surely. And Catholicism is not uh, the Church of Christ. So, but now, <coughs> when you look at the Church, even from that time forth, just this recent yesterday, until today, all these uh, sin has, the, the, the way sin has been infiltrating the church, homosexuality here, the gospel of prosperity here, uh, now, and all this worldliness that has taken over the church. And so the church has walked about wandering, going around as, as though the Messiah had not died. 
walking about that. And essentially, in that process, they have been in the church undelivered. It's, it's, it's even like an oxymoron. How can you be in the church if you're not delivered? When people that are in the church are supposed to be the people that are delivered. Amen? But you see, they are preaching, but then when they leave, yeah, as the man of God said, then they go, someone, someone else called their husband is waiting. So it's a man in the church, but then when he go outside, he's waiting for his husband. <laughs> or a woman preaching and then she goes, she's waiting for her wife. So all these, uh, so the Holy Spirit has been missing in the church. Yes, when he sent his mighty prophet, the, 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 the Lord showed the prophet the vision. That they were walking on this road until they came to a junction. Yeah? Then there was a junction going left, I mean a road going left, and another road going right. And the Lord told him, take the right one. Amen. And so they took the right turn, and they kept going, and this road kept meandering, taking turns, yeah? until they came to a point, place where the road went right and more right, mm -hmm. and took an even more right turn, Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. until they came to a place where he now saw the house of the Lord. And the Lord said, look, the house of the Lord. And when he looked at the house of the Lord, he saw that there was a door and there was a cross. And there were some pieces of metals that were co co connecting the dome to the cross, I think. Or the cross to the roof. There was a dome. Yeah. And there was a cross on top of the dome. And there were pieces of metal that were connecting either the cross to the, to yeah. the, to the dome or the okay. dome to the roof. Yeah. Yeah. And so that captured. And now, but then there was the glory on top. There was the glory that was just touching the cross. So that, that I will not make him wonder, why is the glory not touching the roof? Yeah. And so that really caught his attention. Just a few pieces of metal which were old, ragged, which were, you know, about to break. And then they all said, let us enter into the house of the Lord. And so the, the doors opened automatically. And then all of a sudden the, the voice of the Lord was coming from the, from the altar, from the pulpit, from the altar. And then he saw the black chairs. And uh, they were all empty, an endless sea of chairs. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, either, either before the voice or after the voice spoke, yeah. the grass began to grow. Grass, grass, began to grow very, very quickly until it covered all the chairs. So the voice that spoke said, they used to worship here, but they are no more. And so that really made him wonder. So if this is the house of the Lord, and the Lord is saying they used to worship here, Lord, are you saying that you are not seeing anyone in the house? But there are so many churches, so many pastors, so many congregations, you know? Now, is there nobody in the house? So that's the message, it says, the church. So the Lord showed him that to show him how much work there is to be done before the Messiah comes. Amen. And so, so that is the state of the church when the Lord sent his prophet. So if we are to dispute, we cannot dispute with the prophet. You know, all you see is just the vision. You don't ask the Lord to show you that kind of vision. The Lord himself show, shows you what he wants you to see. Amen. And uh, so, so the Lord then revealed that major revelation that there was no one in the house. They are giving Holy Communion, but he doesn't see them in the house. And, and that, uh, of course, this is, this is the time of, uh, you know, gay-friendly churches, and they, they are called, uh, what do they call Seeker-friendly churches. That for us to, in, to, to invite more people, let us go to a club, let us ask the club to give us some, you know, space, and let us invite people and say, just ask us questions, you know. And uh, uh, in that way, you tell us, what do you want to see in church? You know, just tell me, and then, and then they begin to, to, to they begin so in that kind of your philosophy now, mm -hmm. like they begin to change the way they do church based on what the unbelievers are saying because they want the unbelievers to come to church. 
So now in that sea, so they used to worship here, but they are no more. And so now when the Lord sends his prophet, preaching, preaching since 2004, somewhere there, then come 2012, how long has that been? Eight years? Mm -hmm. Then when he sent him, then he began to rebuke sin in the church, began to rebuke money in the church, began to change the worship in the church, stop putting away all those mini skates and all this dancing and rapping in church. Mm -hmm. Then, and then, and then he showed the Lord, then the Lord showed him the cloud coming. Then when the cloud's prophecy was fulfilled, and then the Lord followed up, he says, Now I am tabernacled. So that means now the Lord is in the house. Amen. Yes. The Lord raises his prophets. So now, now you look at Moses in the wilderness and the Israelites and the cloud of the Lord. And you look at the church now and the Lord is in the house. So what does that mean? Then that means no more fooling around in the church. That's why the, the prophet of the Lord always said, those sandals, I don't know what are the what? Those sandals that you are walking with, that you have come in with here in, church, in the church. Or the sheep of Jethro. I don't know what kind of sheep of Jethro you are tended, tending here in the church. Now that the cloud of the Lord is here, yeah, he says, now that the cloud of the Lord, doesn't matter if you used to be here pocketing and whistling and says, now put that outside there. Leave that out there. Now it's time to put away the sheep of Jethro. Now it's time to take off the sandals. Meaning respect in the house now. Holiness. Reverence in the house now. Now is the time for us to walk this mighty walk towards the rapture. Amen? Uh, so the Lord is in the house. That means our worship now changes. Amen? Our worship changes. The way we handle the scriptures change. The way we handle ourselves changes. Because the Lord himself is essentially tabernacled. The glory is in the house. The glory has been absent from the house. You see, the children of Israel, the Lord chose them. The, he chose them, he said, you will be my people. But he also said, even if I created the whole earth, says, to me, you will be a special people, a peculiar nation. Amen. But the day Israel refused to rebuke sin, he says, he's been watching them. Until one day, one day, he took away his, what was that? The Ark of Covenant. And that day, they said, I kabod. Meaning, the glory has left. When the glory of the Lord is in the house, meaning the Father himself is in the house. The, meaning he himself is in the house. He's leading. He's the king. He's directing. But the day he left, they say the glory has left. Now Israel now was without her protection. That's why they left. They lost to the Philistines. Was it the Philistines? During the days of Eli, when his sons were taking their three from folks, folks, three three from folks, sticking into the meat of God, the meat that was supposed to be offered a sacrifice, sleeping with girls that were coming to offer sacrifices. And and the father was not rebuking sin. But you see, he spoke to them. But uh, he didn't do his task well. That's why the Lord spoke to the young boy, Samuel. Samuel. Yeah. Yeah. He judged, told him, I'm going to judge the house of Eli because of the sin that is taking place in that house. The glory of the Lord left. So at some point in the house of the Lord, called the church, the glory left. But you see, as we saw in the book of, uh, was that uh, Sardis? It says, you are dead. So Sardis was delivered. And then at one point, the Holy Spirit left and they didn't even know he left. Until he came to break news to them, he says, you are dead. But it's, it's easy to begin to dispute and say, no, what, what do you mean I'm dead? What, what do you mean the Lord is not in the house? Or what do you mean, you know? Uh, but you see, the Lord's perspective is not our perspective. And as long as we are not submitting to the ways of God, 
will always be prone to taking other ways that we are not supposed to. And all the time, convinced that we are walking in the ways of the Lord, but we have essentially left it a long time ago. Deception is very dangerous. Yeah? Very, very dangerous. Deception, because it, it, it is that deception that makes you think you are in the right way, when in fact you are going totally different direction. And so now the Lord is tabernacled in the house. Meaning, now, He has come to help us to enter. Because it is clear now that this is the generation that will enter into the kingdom of God. This is the generation that awaits the rapture. This is the generation that will be caught up in the rapture. The church that will be found ready today, this is the church that will see the coming of the Messiah. So, times have changed. And indeed, this is the greatest time in history. Yeah? The, the prophets of all, they looked forward to this day and they say, how I wish I'll be in that day. Nevertheless, the Lord gave them words to utter that speaks of the days we live today. Amen? And when the Spirit of Christ in them spoke, they demarcated, they, 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 they began to describe this time. Amen? And then they begin to talk about the glory that was coming. And then they begin to define or they begin to give us to give us the reason why this glory must appear. Amen? Whether you read that from uh, the prophet Isaiah, when he says, uh, uh, Go ye, my people. Duh. But before that he says, he talks about your dew shall be like the dew. I mean your glory shall be like the, uh, the morning dew. And then he talks about entering into the rapture. And closing the doors and the Lord's wrath coming down to the earth. But you see that in the book of Joel when he says, It shall come to pass in those days that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Amen? Amen. So these are the days that have been described long ago. Very, very long ago. From days of old. And today they are here. The glory of the Lord is finally here. Amen. Amen. It has been missing because we have, redir we, had dir we had redirected our focus from the Lord. To other things, philosophy. Because when you are so much focused on philosophy, and now your 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 the cross has it's it's either you focus on the cross or you get caught up in the philosophies of mankind. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, and indeed, uh, this gospel is very very important and very delicate to handle. We need to protect it very well. Hallelujah. So, yes, so the Lord is in the house, His tabernacle. The glory is here. That's why many, many things are taking place now. And uh, the Messiah is about to come. Very, very, very shortly, the Messiah will come. And, and we want to enter. You know, if the Lord, the Lord, the, 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 the Lord at one time sent a man called Simeon. And he told Simeon that Simeon will not die until he sees the salvation of the Lord, until he sees Jesus. Meaning, Simeon was not going to die until the Messiah comes. Amen? Meaning, Simeon was the sign and a wonder to his generation. Hallelujah. Meaning, when you look at Simeon's life, you begin to tell the timeline. So it was just a countdown. The more his, the more his days advance, the more, <laughs> the more closer the coming of the Messiah was. <laughs> Amen? And so even today, we know that the man of God is one of the two witnesses. And so we know that he will be here even after the rapture to continue some work. Amen. And we know that, yes, then after the rapture, very mighty things will take place between him and the Antichrist. So, then that means, during his lifetime, the Messiah is coming. Hallelujah. You see how close it is. So, as long as he's alive, and he will be alive, as long as he's alive, the Messiah will come. The Messiah will come 
during his days of prophesying. And he will prophesy even after the coming of the Messiah. Many, and you see now he already has gray hair. <laughs> so many, the, the, the older, the more his days advance, the closer we are to the coming of the Messiah. Now, we don't want to set any dates. But you see, now that the, all these prophecies have been fulfilled, the, prof, the vision in the vision has been fulfilled. And now, the, the, the transfiguration that he saw in that vision also now has taken place. Meaning what's left now is the coming of the Messiah. So there is a mighty, mighty countdown to the rapture right now. And if we are wise, as I said in that text, so now there is no more time to fool around. If we are really wise, now is the time for us to, to begin repenting on a serious note. Repentance must become our daily practice. Because we do not want to be found unaware. We do not want to be found, uh, like the Bible says, who is that wise and faithful servant? Yeah? Who will be found giving food to his servants at the time, at their time. But what if that servant begin to what? To drink and misuse others. And then he says, ah, my master is still a long way off. See, we do not want to be those ones who are foolish. He says, ah, the Messiah is not, yet, is not yet come. So let me just relax. My prayer life here, my fasting life, ah, you know, I'll do that later. I say, no, now is the time to be that wise and faithful servant. You take your fasting life seriously. Take your prayer life seriously. The study of the word, you take it very seriously. And now, the coming of the Messiah consumes you like never before. Amen? Because that will be a one-time event. It will never be repeated. It's not going to be a trial. Eh? It's not going to be a, a, a test run. To say, okay, let's test it one, one time. All right, they are, ready. They, are, they are not so ready. Okay, let's try it again. No, no. Once it takes place, as the, as the Prophet of the Lord said, it is irreversible. It will never take place again. It will never happen again. So really we have a golden opportunity. This is the golden opportunity that the generations have been hoping for. Amen? Because for those that died before us, they always thought, what if the Messiah comes today? And they tried to imagine how to prepare. They tried to prepare themselves and see how they can, you know, what kind of preparation would you make if you know that Jesus was coming back in your lifetime? Now we have that opportunity. Now we don't have to imagine what if Jesus is coming back in our lifetime. Yeah? Now we know we have the facts now. The revelation is here. He is coming back in our time. So now how will we, now, now let us now prepare as others wish they would have been preparing. Amen? Or should I say, let us now prepare as heaven wants us to prepare. Because time is over. Amen. Time is really over. What I wanted to share was, was the fact that, you know, when the Messiah was prophesying the scriptures, many, many years ago, it was difficult for those that received the prophecy to decipher, to really decipher and demarcate the time at which he was going to be born. Amen. So they could not work out well. When is he coming? The prophecy talks about where he was coming. But it was hidden. It was an enigma. Hidden in a mystery. It was a mystery. Amen. So, they tried to demarc They tried to, to see, is it here? Is it there? And they could not, they were kept from understanding. They didn't understand that the Messiah, when he comes, he'll, he'll come and he'll be born. And then he'll come back again to take the church. And then he will come back again to destroy the Antichrist. In fact, when he came first, those that understood that it was he, they now were asking, so when are you going to destroy this, this Antichrist here? <laughs> I mean, when are you going to destroy the Roman, you know? Because they expected, for them they expected that when the Messiah comes, he will begin to destroy all these other, you know, superpowers, and then he will begin his reign. Amen. 
So, yet, the scriptures had demarcated three types of coming. Amen? Three types of coming. They only thought when he comes, he will deliver us from our captivity and he will begin to destroy all our enemies. And then we will begin to, he will begin to rule. But now we understand that actually there were three. So he coming here as a baby, you know, for unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulder. Mm. Yeah? He shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. And then it says, he will rule upon the throne of David. So that was another dis dispensation. So this dispensation of him coming as a baby, and then him coming to rule over the house of David, and to establish it with righteousness and justice. Amen. Now, you know, even Daniel now talked about when the Messiah will come, and then he was going to judge the nation in his glory, seated on the throne. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for your coming back very soon. Lord, we give ourselves to you. Father, we repent even today. Lord, we ask you to purify us. Father, separate us. Make us holy and righteous and take away all sin, O Lord. Father, I pray, O Lord, that you keep us fixed on the old ragged cross, that, that our eyes may keep looking forward to the coming of your glory, even as Titus too has said. And Father, I pray, Lord, that uh, we will not lose focus, that, Lord, we will not be distracted, that, Father, we will keep our eyes fixed on you in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, how we look forward to your coming. I will look forward to you, Lord Jesus, for the day you will come to, re to redeem us and to take us to heaven. Father, I pray, Lord, that you help us, Lord, to be different, to be holy, to be righteous, to prepare for the coming of the Messiah like never before. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.